IMAX CEO Richard Gelfand joins us now. Um, so what's your overall demand expectation for Taylor Swift? She's obviously had a tremendous impact on the overall economy, her tour generating uh, an estimated a billion dollars for those live concerts. Um, what's your expectation for how much it can generate for the big screen? I mean, I think um, I think quite a lot. It's going to be played around four or five weeks. As you know, the demand for the concert was really overwhelming. And I think what uh, the Swift family is hoping to accomplish is access to lots of people who couldn't either uh, get tickets or couldn't afford tickets. So this provides accessibility. And we sold out about 50% uh, of the seats we put on sale um, yesterday, which is the first day it, it went on sale. 50% of your total seats you sold out um, I'm actually surprised it wasn't 100% just given the overall demand <laughs> for the concert itself. Um, but kind of speaking to this idea that live experiences are back, and we were talking last hour about how this decision was made to uh, broadcast in a theater as opposed to doing so via streaming. How do you think that decision was made? Um, and what do you think it says about just the overall media picture and the landscape right now? Yeah, I think that's really the headline, Leslie, which is that Instead of launching an event through streaming, it's being launched directly through the theatrical window. And I think it confirms what the studios have been saying and most of the streamers, it, which is that a theatrical release enhances the value of later windows like streaming. And that's the right way to launch it. And you've seen virtually every major blockbuster film launch that way. So I think it, you know, kind of, I think Taylor Swift and her team uh, said, that's the best way to create long-term value in the, in, in the property. And AMC was the one who kind of put that deal together. While it's fantastic, I don't think there's going to be a lot of cookie cutters because there's just one Taylor Swift. And things studios bring to the table, like marketing and distribution dates and you know a, a holistic global approach, when you're Taylor Swift, you don't need that. You just need the name. <laughs> That's true, Rich. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, thinking about the concert film and whether or not it could be replicated. I know A24 is redoing this Stop Making Sense concert film, which I tried to get tickets to at AMC, and it was just one show date, and, and it, it, I, I was blocked out. I just wonder if you think exhibitors get incrementally more generous on showtimes if this continues. Yeah, well, first of all, Carl, um, we're doing that with A24, and actually it launches at the Toronto Film Festival on Monday in an IMAX theater during... The festival, and we're also doing a live Q and A around the Talking Heads, um, in I think about 15 theaters um, to to premiere it. But yeah, I mean, I do think um, it, it definitely demonstrates that for different types of content, how important the theatrical window is. And as as you know, because we've talked about it before, you know, IMAX has a live business, like I was just talking about with the Talking Heads, and uh, there's a Disney film called The Creator, where we did a live event in our theaters in the last couple of days. So I do think that um, at least IMAX is, is anxious to find alternative programming. Yeah, I think one of the silver linings about COVID was that it taught all of us that you can't just rely on one source of content. You need multiple sources, and I think you know, live concerts are one of them.